So I am going to briefly talk on. Actually, there is so much in ultrasound, which we can see in pleuropulmonary diseases. So I'll just keep it brief. The basic signs uh, which we see uh, on ultrasound. So see, ultrasound basically the sound waves cannot cannot travel through air. So that's one big limitation. But that's why we rely on a lot of direct and indirect visualization of structures and artifact interpretation. So all the artifacts that are produced by the sound. are uh, interpreted and we then we come to a conclusion what is the pathology so uh, there are various types of probes but a curvilinear um, a c51 probe is an all rounder lung ultrasound has a very high diagnostic accuracy if done in a proper manner it is a comprehensive point of care scan can be done less than in less than 5 minutes so these are the probes which we use Mm, the linear, the curvilinear, and phased array, but of course the convex proves the curvilinear uh, wins it hands down. And once in a while, we have to resort to phased uh, array probe and linear. So, what are the areas we need to scan? So, there are basically eight zones which are uh, to be seen: four anterior and four posterior. The two anterior ones are the superior and inferior mid clavicular line bilaterally, and uh, laterally in the mid axillary line bilaterally, and same posteriorly. So there are ten uh, basic signs of lung ultrasound. So I'm just going to cover uh, one by one what uh, the signs are and how they help us to interpret. So the first one is a bat wing sign or a sliding sign. See, since the direct visualization is very limited um, for lung, these these are the signs which actually help us uh, to get to the diagnosis. So bat wing sign is I don't know why it's called bat wing, but it appears like uh, the wings of the bat. The two uh, sides, the clavicles, are shadowing here, and uh, in in between the pleura is there. So that's how it is called the bat wing sign. And the sliding sign, we what happens is you identify the rib posterior shadowing should be seen in between the lung on respiration is seen moving. So that is the lung sliding sign. So what is normal is. a uh, lung good lung sliding sign, sign should be seen there must be some few comatal artifacts which are hypoechoic uh, and arise from the pleural interface this is the normal thing so a lung sliding tells us that it's all fine so this is the how the lung you can see it's sliding beneath the pleura that's the uh, sliding sign present so there's the second sign is uh, it is more absence of sliding sign which gives us a lot of clue but uh, the next is the seashore sign it is nothing but the same lung sliding plotted against uh, in a with the m mode uh, m mode on parallelly the lung sliding will show the seashore sign so what happens is the subcutaneous and the tissue above the pleural line generate horizontal lines where because there is no movement and the movement of the lung creates a sandy appearance below the pleural line created at the sliding so that gives us a seashore sign this is how the seashore sign looks like so the upper skin muscle and pleural line are not moving and the, the lungs uh, keep on moving which causes the disturbance in the m mode so this is the normal sign and tells us that the, uh, it shows us this is all normal this is again the same in pneumothorax what happens the there is air interface uh, be, uh, between the two pleura so it doesn't allow the lung sliding to be seen the movement of the lung to be seen so the, here you can see there is there is no movement so the sliding sign is absent in pneumothorax so uh, there can be few other conditions where we the sliding sign can be absent there could be effusions consolidation with uh, pleural adhesion chest tubes or advanced copd so you have to see with it in a play, uh, clinical setup how the patient is and then make a diagnosis then the third is something which is norm normally seen in the normal lung it's called the a lines the horizontal reverberation artifacts that originate from the pleural line give these air li um, a lines parallel to uh, each other so they are at a equidistant to each other this artifact is in normal lungs and also seen in pneumothorax so absence of a lines means air has been replaced with something else that transmit the sound waves that means either it's consolidation or effusion the a lines will be absent so this this is how the a, a lines look like they are placed parallelly parallel to each other then the fourth sign is the um, quad sign quad sign it's formed because it forms a quadrilateral 
So uh, bil, uh, between the two, the superior rib and the inferior rib, between the two rib, ribs, when the uh, there is fluid in between the parietal and distal pleura, it forms this quad sign. So that's how we diagnose a pleural effusion. The sinusoidal sign is also seen in um, pleural effusion. What happens is basically the jelly flapping sign or the, the co collapsed lung keeps flapping. That gives a sinusoidal wave-like pattern on M mode. So this is also diagnostic of uh, pleural effusion with uh, underlying lung movement. So tissue, then the next sign I would go to is the tissue sign, which that means the lung looks like a solid tissue. The, it looks like almost like the liver. That is also called hepatization of the uh, lung. So this is how it looks like. Uh, it is there. You can see the air bronchogram in, also in this. Something related to tissue sign is a shred sign. So shred sign, it, it looks like shredded cheese appearance. So it is at the interface between the solid lung and the plural, uh, uh, and the consolidated lung and the normal lung. So that's, you see this shred-like pattern, that's the shred sign. So there are, there, this is the consolidation where it is solid um, uh, lung tissue, you can see uh, almost looking like liver with mobile um, air bronchogram seen. This is again, same thing, a consolidation with air bronchogram. That's, this is static air there and trapped. Here the, you can see a solid lung with a diaphragm uh, below and uh, effusion is also present. Then we come to very important lines, which we see then it's uh, scary to find. So these are the lung rockets. Basically, these are vertical lines uh, from the pleura and one to two may be seen in normal lungs, but more than three lines, then it is pathological. So whenever the fluid replaces air, these lines are seen. So these are, how do they form? These are similar to that curly B lines we see on x-rays. So basically between the secondary lobules are the uh, interlobular septa. So when the fluid fills in the septa, these cause the reverberations to form and we get the um, B line. So this is, they are seen in all interstitial syndrome. So they are cometal artifacts. They are arising from the pleural line. They move with lung sliding. They are hyperechoic. They spread to the edge of the screen without feeding. So the in seizure sign, because the rest of the, uh, the proximal part of the chest is not moving, that is static, and the uh, lung causes the disturbance, which causes the seizure sign. But in pneumothorax, since the air is in the space, they, it won't, the uh, sound waves cannot travel down. So it will all be static lines. So this is also called as the barcode sign or the stratosphere sign. This is again a uh, diagnostic of pneumothorax. So one important point, one of the very good signs which we come across is the absent sliding, lung sliding uh, sign, uh, lung point, which is the interface between the area where uh, the pneumothorax is there to the normal lung. So if you get to that, then uh, this is like 100% diagnostic of pneumothorax. So here, you can see the lung point. See, the, there's a portion of the, at the arrow, there's a portion of the lung which is moving, sliding, good sliding is seen. And there's a small portion after that where there's no sliding. So this is the lung point and 100% conclusive of pneumothorax. Another similar example, there's no slide in one half of the screen and they're sliding on the other half. So lung point is found at the interface between inflated lung and the pleural layer. So you have to be a little vigilant to catch that point. It is a little hard to find, but with good experience, you can find it. It is 100% accurate for pneumothorax. So once you get it, you know, this is pneumothorax. So black to white is mild to moderate interstitial edema. Can, as it increases, it becomes severe interstitial edema, alveolar edema. Then we get consolidation, which is like turning again to black. So the dry lung, which is the normal lung, that means there's no fluid or anything, is we see A lines. As we start seeing B lines, consolidation, pleural effusion, as it starts getting with a wet lung, it's all abnormal beyond that. So there are a few other images, a uh, few other artifacts that we routinely see. So one is a mirror image artifact, which tells us that everything is good because this nice 
reflection from the diaphragm and uh, you can see the mirror image of the liver beyond the pleura. Then there's a spine sign where pleural effusion is so much, you can see the spine below and you can, this tells us about the, to help us to diagnose the pleural effusion. This is the jellyfish sign, same thing which I told earlier. So the fluid is, um, the collapsed lung is like moving like a jellyfish in the fluid. So there's one important, blue, the blue protocol, which is there. It's one of the important things to end lung ultrasound. So uh, I'm just going to briefly go through this. So uh, if you see a B profile, you know this is uh, some interstitial pulmonary edema or any some of the one of the interstitial diseases. If A profile is present, that means uh, if lung sliding is present and A profile is present, then B uh, lung issue is ruled out. We look for a thrombosed vein, which is seen for uh, which indicates a pulmonary embolism. If the veins are free, then you have to find other ways or you can go in for a added additional modality to check whether there's any pulmonary embolism. Then if the lung sliding is abolished, it is absent and we see B lines, that means this is pneumonia. If lung sliding is absent and we see A lines and we see the lung point, then we know this is pneumothorax. Without the lung point, uh, we need to go in for other diagnostic modalities. If you see a consolidation, then it is the C profile, then it is pneumonia. So this is how the blue uh, protocol is followed. So I would summarize the ultrasound signs that A lines are horizontal equidistant reverberations of the pleural line. These are normal aeration. Sliding lung is absent or you see a lung point, then you have to think of pneumothorax then that means there's absence of movement which is seen between visceral and parietal pleura. Then if you see B lines, they are vertical projections from the pleural line to the edge of the screen. They, you have to remember this, that they should be reaching the edge below. Then it's a wet lung, alveolar interstitial syndrome. If you see alveolar consolidation, lung tissue can be visualized due to lack of air, pneumonia or atelectasis, also known as hepatization. So these are a few examples. See this, the first one is the normal A lines. Second one, we can see small subpleural consolidation and the presence of B lines. In the third one, there's lung consolidation seen with air bronchogram. So this is consolidation or pneumonia. Then we see confluent B lines. You are dealing with interstitial syndrome. If you see fluid directly, lung consolidation, which is looking like liver, and uh, so this is a, a consolidated hepatization of the lung, which what is called. Then if in pneumothorax, you'll see other things, you'll not see the seashore sign and you'll see a stratosphere sign. So key is to integrate point of care ultrasound findings into clinical context because a similar appearance with a different history would give would be lead, lead to something else. So please take a proper history that's more important. So it is, all starts with good images. Take the time to generate high quality lung ultrasound images. Be aware of common pitfalls of image generation and interpretation, interpretation because ultimately these are all indirect signs. So you have to uh, you know, pick everything and then integrate and make the diagnosis. So be a doctor first. Be a good clinician yourself to interpret this. How uh, Take a good history. You are always with the patient. So you can always ask directly. Thank you.